Welcome back guys to another video. So today we are going to just do a traditional sit down video and I will be answering all of your guys' questions that you have in regards to reverse dieting. So what is reverse dieting? Reverse dieting is a process to where you are increasing your calories while also decreasing your cardio. You see a lot of people out of their competition preps, so bodybuilding, maybe they compete in bikini figure, maybe after a dieting phase, they will hop into what's called a reverse diet. So many people will ask the question, what do I do after my diet? Like what happens once I achieve my goal? Calories can only get so low, cardio can only get so high to where it's not sustainable anymore. And that is when you'd want to incorporate the reverse diet. So no, you do not have to be a competitor to incorporate a reverse diet, reverse dieter, I almost said that. Um, you do not have to be a competitor to incorporate a reverse diet. You just have to be someone who has dieted and dieted for a prolonged period of time. For me, I would say anything that has been 12 weeks consecutively or longer is a prolonged period of she time. She is playing with the toys and is being quite distracting. Okay, so you do not have to be someone who has competed. I would say if you've gotten your calories less than 1500, 1500 calories for a prolonged period of time and are doing more than 35 minutes of cardio five times a week, you are someone who is at a place to reverse diet. However, you do not have to be that low calorically or that high with your cardio to incorporate or you reverse diet. You simply have to be at a point to where you are wanting to build up your metabolism. So that would be um, how many ca calories your body requires to maintain your weight or even add weight. Your metabolism changes and it fluctuates. So if you're dieting, your metabolism slows down. It goes from needing 1800 calories a day to only needing 1200 calories a day. But this can happen in the reverse. So that's the whole point of a reverse diet too, is to increase that metabolic rate. For me and my prep, um, my metabolism was highly adaptive. I was doing lots and lots of cardio a day, like two hours of cardio a day. Um, my calories got to a point where they were less than 1400 for a prolonged period of time. So now I have to put in the time to rebuild my metabolism, rebuild my metabolic rate, and it's going to be a long process. So number one question I get is, how long should I reverse diet? Too often I see people who will hop into a reverse and they will just kind of stay in there for a little bit. Maybe they work the calories from 1400 up to 2000 calories a day. Then they're at 2000 calories a day. They're there for like two weeks and they're like, okay, I'm ready to cut. That's not long enough. You have to work your way up slowly. And I like to say the saying to my clients, you have to pay to play. So whatever time you spent playing, AKA cutting, you have to pay that back with a reverse diet. So paying that same amount of time back, reversing. So for example, if you did a 16 week long bikini prep, you are going to have to spend at least 16 weeks, four months, reversing out of that process. Now, someone who has done a bunch of fad diets, crash diets their whole life, this is where you might be in a reverse diet phase for a year long period. And so many people are like, what the heck? Why would I do that? Here's the thing. You're taking two steps back to take 10 steps forward. Okay. And odds are you're probably at a point where you're at like 1300 calories a day. You're doing 30 minutes an hour of cardio every single day and your weight training and you're walking and you're doing all the right things. Right. And you're still not making progress. So here's the thing. You're already at a plateau. So what you're currently doing is not working. And you have to admit that insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and you're expecting a different result. That is why you should implement a reverse diet is realize what you're currently doing is number one, not sustainable. You're probably not enjoying your life only eating that many calories and doing that much cardio. So you might as well implement a reverse diet, step away from the scale, literally focus on building your metabolism, um, having an increase in energy, lifting heavier weights and feeling better. And then you can approach dieting when your body's in a better place. I'm going to just go and answer some questions in regards to reverse dieting now. That is just like a mini breakdown. This isn't like a whole video of like when, what, where, and why, but talking a little bit about just, just the shallow ends of reverse dieting. I'm not breaking down like the science too much. Um, again, though, I am in a reverse dieting phase. I am only 
like four weeks into my post-show period and I'm looking to continue to track and stay very adherent to my reverse because I've asked a lot out of my body this prep and in order for me to monitor my health and to respect my body I need to reverse out of this process again when we diet we are demanding a lot out of our bodies it's very important to respect them when we are dieting but when we are coming out of dieting as well okay so the questions that we have how fast should you increase your macros post show so in a reverse diet you can go slow or fast slow i would say would be adding in like five grams of fat um, and less than 10 grams of carbs per week whereas protein is usually consistent assuming that you are consuming around one gram per pound of body weight so that would be a slow reverse versus a fast reverse might look like hey post show we're going to just up your calories to where your refeed macros were at so maybe you're at like i'm just going to use like a caloric level maybe you're at 1200 calories a day and your refeed macros were at like 1450 you would immediately bump up to that each and every day and usually with the increases it's going to look just towards the carbs and fats with protein again remaining consistent um there is no right and wrong way i will say with a faster approach you do risk putting on body fat at a quicker rate, but you also are going to get your hormones at a healthier place. You're going to be putting on muscle faster. You're going to feel better faster, and you are going to immediately push your body more from a catabolic state where you're breaking down muscle. You're not making improvements in the gym. Strength isn't going up. You're not putting on muscle um, in a caloric deficit to putting on muscle and having energy and feeling better and getting your period back. So all those good things will happen faster the faster you reverse. Um, okay, let's see. Have you ever lost and regained your period in the past? Yes, you know what's interesting is I just got my period back today. So yay me, yay being a woman. But I did lose my period this prep. I only lost it for a month, but usually every single time I prep, I lose my period for at least three months, sometimes eight months at a time. When you, are, when you have lost your period for three months consecutively, it's considered secondary amenorrhea. The only way you can get your period back is by increasing your calories and decreasing your energy expenditure, aka a reverse diet. Um, put a big emphasis on increasing your fats, put a big emphasis on sleep and rest and recovery. If you haven't gotten your period back, and it is something that is concerning you though, I do highly recommend that you talk to your doctor about it. Do not just let them throw you on birth control though because that's not going to be the answer to get your period because your period on birth control is considered a false bleed, so it's not a natural real period. So if you're someone who's very concerned about your fertility and having children, um, I would recommend that you say like, hey, I want help getting my period back in a natural way that is not supplemented in with birth control. Um, I've gotten mine back every single time though, and it's just come back with my calories coming back and my weight increasing a little bit. Is it possible to do a prep on your own with or without a coach? It is, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, I think the post-show period, you should still have a coach too, at least for eight weeks post-show. Um, but even I as a coach, I. I am a coach and I have a coach. You know, you need someone to help hold you accountable. And in prep, you're so highly subjective to yourself that you need someone to give you that objective opinion and guide you. Um, and you get tunnel vision. I get so bad tunnel vision that I need someone to keep me in line and tell me what is right and what is wrong and like tell me when to push and tell me when to pull back. So I would highly recommend that you get a coach, get a coach with experience, get a coach with credentials, get a coach that's methods are in alignment with yours and what you're looking for. Those are my recommendations. And also make sure that you're hopping on a call with this coach and that you're not just buying a prep or buying a cookie cutter meal plan off the internet. SOS, don't do that. Are you working with a coach during your reverse diet? Um, I currently am right now, but I will be speaking on that in the future too, because my goal right now is to work with a coach for at least um, three months and then once my caloric um, intake is at a point where I am probably over around like 2100 calories odds are I'm going to be taking over my reverse and implementing my own methods for myself and or um, going to a less accountable coaching so like not like a weekly check-in but maybe like a bi 
monthly check-in for me. I am not a beginner to this. This is not my first rodeo. I've done like 18 bikini shows, so I don't feel like I need as much one-on-one uh, -on -one attention like a client. And again, I also have my education in this, but it doesn't mean that I'm not human and that I don't want that objective opinion. I do. So I probably will have a coach, just less accountability, if that makes sense. Okay. How do you fix your leptin levels? This person put leptin, but I think they meant leptin. <laughs> leptin is depleted during a dieting phase. So that is basically a hormone that um, tells your brain that you're satiated after a meal. You eat a meal and you either feel satisfied or you're like, oh, I'm a little bit hungry. Um, when you're in a dieting phase, if you're someone who is highly restricting your calories, maybe you're in a competition prep, you might find that you eat a meal and you're still hungry. Like not just like, oh, I'm hungry. Like you're legitimately freaking hungry. That is because your leptin levels are depleted. How do you um, normalize out your leptin levels? Reverse dieting. <laughs> this is magical answer to like everything in this for all these questions, but reverse dieting. So increasing your carbohydrates and increasing your fats each and every week and dropping your cardio. You need the carbohydrates though. So to help your leptin levels from getting super depleted and low, what I like to implement for my clients and what you'll see a lot of people implement is things like refeeds or even diet breaks. So having a day or two of higher carbohydrates, high and overall higher calories, or maybe even a week or two where you're doing that um, just to prevent any sort of metabolic um, adaptation and to help keep your hormones in a good place. What do you do if you battle the post meal hunger after being in a deficit for an extended period of time? Honestly, I do struggle with this. I struggle with my own personal satiety and this is just from my background of struggling with eating disorders, but also um, from the dieting from competition prep, it did get pretty extreme. What helps me is staying hydrated and staying busy. Um, so I give myself set meal times for the day. I work from home, so I'm literally working out of my kitchen and could grab food whenever I want. But I don't allow myself permission to just like constantly eat and constantly consume. I tell myself, Nicole, like you're eating breakfast at this time, lunch at this time, dinner at this time, a snack here, a snack there, and then that's it. Um, so that's what helps me. And also just recognizing that if I'm feeling that hungry feeling after a meal, I just tell myself that you're not hungry. You had a meal, it was well balanced, it had the carbohydrates, it had the fats, it had the protein, it had some good vitamins and minerals in it. You're not hungry, your brain is telling you you're hungry because your hormones are trying to work on getting balanced. I know that sounds weird, but I have to talk to myself in like a science-based manner so I can understand like, it's not like emotional hunger or like true hunger, it's just my body trying to overcome all this dieting and again i am taking steps to work on that and make it better and to uh, regulate out my satiety and my leptin levels and that's through reverse dieting so for me mentally i know it's going to get better and i know that eventually i will start to feel satiated after my meals on a consistent basis and again today was actually one of the first days where i ate a meal and i felt satisfied and i didn't feel the need to like want more food after that meal and that was such good news for me that my satiety cues are coming back. I was super pumped about that because it's something that I've struggled with for a long time. And this time away from the stage where I'm, I'm taking roughly a year and a half off, I'm looking forward to having my satiety back, to having my um, body relax and be at a happy place and just find my new normal, um, which is going to be a healthy, lean version of me. But. I hope you guys enjoyed this chat on all things reverse dieting. Um, I will be doing updates again. I'm not super big on doing like weekly physique updates here on YouTube, but I do do more um, like physique updates on my Instagram. If you guys haven't checked that out, make sure you go check out my Instagram. You can follow me and hope there. And then I also post episodes all the time on my podcast. So beyond the bikini radio, I post at least two to three times a week. They are topics that are fitness nutrition based and also mindset based. And sometimes I even have on guests. So check out beyond the bikini radio if you're liking more content from me, but I hope you all have a wonderful day and happy prepping or reverse dieting.